Hello, this is Casual Commodore 64 back with another video. This time it's a hardware video, and um, this is about the XRG Mini Frame Meister Upscaling Unit. I bought this specifically for use with the Commodore 64. As you might have guessed, I'm very picky about quality, and as long as the quality can get better on the Commodore 64s, so I will not stop until I have that in my hands so um, this thing is a little expensive but um, I think it's worth the money because it gives one hell of a picture um, about how to set it up for use with the Commodore 64 I will get into a little later first a little overview uh, well it looks like that this is the front and from left to right first we have RGB in now as you might have noticed this looks very very little like a SCART plug but you can get a SCART adapter plug for it actually I'm gonna show that right now so let's see here like this this one nope that's not the one this one you plug that in right there and this one it's a mini USB port it plugs in the back right there it provides power um, what for I'm not really sure it's about some synchronization thing um, but it works <laughs> and of course there's a female guard on the other end so you can use RGB sources Alright, let's go on. So RGB. Um, here we have like normal ports. White and red are for audio, left and right, and yellow is for composite video, and that right there, which we are going to use for the Commodore 64, is the Super Video in, or Super. Oh, what was it? I called it S video and S was not super video, it's separate video. Okay, separate video plug. Well, it's an S video plug, and uh, that's the best signal a Commodore 64 can provide. But since so few televisions nowadays support S video in, stuff like this is required. Sorry, it's required on the back from left to right we have here an SD micro port which is used for updating the firmware um, other things you can use it for is I haven't used I haven't done that but you can like save some profiles save some settings and I'm not really sure what else <laughs> um, there right, that right there is the HDMI out where all the magic is exported <laughs> those right there um, um, is some Japanese stuff this is a I think it's called a D terminal that's D5 that's 1080p that's a, that's a Japanese plug standard I'm, sh I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna use it and here we have two HDMI ports that's HDMI in 1 and 2 and as of firmware version 1.10 it supports direct so it's not gonna do anything to the signal it's just gonna take it in and put it out which is great for people who want that <laughs> USB uh, besides providing power to the uh, to the SCART adapter thingy I'm not really sure what it's used for and power. Power is required. Uh, we have something on the top here. I have never ever used. I have only used the remote. Uh, let's see if I can improvise here. Power. Power. Well, I guess that turns the unit on and off. Input switches between inputs. You can uh, specifically choose which input to use on the buttons here, but you can switch between them. Menu brings up the menu on the screen and next two buttons for navigating the menu well the next three buttons actually 
So that's pretty much how it looks like. And uh, when you see pictures of it, it, it and see the price, it should be metal, but it's not. It's plastic. But uh, don't be fooled. That doesn't make it any worse. It can also stand. There's a little stand here. So you can put it up vertically. I'm not going to do that. It's going to... Okay, let me try. At least here. Sorry about that. There we go. So it can stand if that's your thing. Alright, moving on to the power plug. Where I bought it, I bought it off eBay. I, whoa, sorry, all the way around. I specifically went for a unit which shipped a power supply that could be used in Denmark. See this one takes 100 to 240 volts as, as input, power input. That way I only need a plug converter, which I have and which also can be bought on eBay. A simple plug converter to a Euro, Euro, Euro plug I think it's called. So you can just plug that in here and plug it into power and it, it works. The remote is uh, it's Japanese. As you can see here, it's all in Japanese. But uh, luckily, you can buy some. Uh, you can buy an English overlay for this very remote on eBay, and put it on. And then, as you can see, it's all well and good. It looks English and interpretable for a lot of other people. <laughs> so there you go. Now, updating the firmware, it's uh, it's easy. Uh, you prepare an SD card, the micro SD card, and in the root of the SD card you have this folder called the XRPG Mini, and inside that folder you put all the update data, which consists of four folders, and uh, and that's it. You put it uh, you put it inside the you power off the Frame Meister, and you put the card in. And you power on the Frame Meister, and you look at the lights at the front. The green lights will shift and do some stuff. And when the red light is the only light that is on and pulsating on and off, like it's in standby mode, update is done. I don't know if it's necessary, but I power off the unit, remove the SD card, and power on the unit again. Okay, I have it all hooked up now. And as you can see, it gives a very, 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 very good picture. It satisfies me. So, like I said, we have an S-Video cable. That's the blue one. Just plugs into the S-Video in on the Frame Meister. And the two other ones are audio, which, yeah. It also comes from the Commodore 64, and that's that's how you hook it up physically. That's that's not that hard. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain a little about the the settings I have found to be very good with the Commodore 64. Now you should view these settings as a guideline because these work for me. A lot of them might work for you, but you might have different taste in picture quality or whatever. For example, I don't care much for scan lines. Some people love scan lines. I, I want the picture to be very sharp and clear. This is what the picture will look like, give or take. I don't know, your TV set might display it a little differently, but this is how it's displayed on my television. Uh, when you first fire up the Frame Meister with default settings, all in all it looks okay and it might work for a lot of people but as long as it can be made better why not make it better first thing is hit the menu button on the remote and uh, this is firmware 2.0 this is the newest as of speaking newest firmware we can check here firmware firmware version 2.0 
um, image mode. Go into image mode and I have found that game 2 displays the best picture for me. So choose that. Off the bat you might not notice a big difference. It depends on the game. Um, so confirm by in the bottom there choosing OK. Like game 1 and standard settings they blur out some some colors some certain colors if some certain colors are neighbors it's gonna blend them mix them in or something it, it looks funny in my eyes uh, that is not completely gone in game 2 but it is significantly reduced so that's why I choose that setting alright go into color settings right there and black black I I put up to one and this and you press OK this is another setting you cannot see from this default picture you can't see any difference but um, certain solid colors some grays and stuff um, has some has some noise you can see them vibrating and buzzing you know I don't know how else to put it that's reduced if you put black up to one not much more than one because then the picture gets darker and we don't want that I don't want that okay next one um, oh actually this one I should have started with HDMI output to the cleanest and crispest picture you just put 1080p um, this is a PAL machine I have I have don't have any experience for NTSC machines, but if you have NTSC machine, choose the one that says 60 in the end. I want 50. We don't want I is for interlace. We want P is for progressive. So we choose that one. There. Now we can see a difference in the picture. I'm not really sure how much the camera picks up because this is not the best of cameras, but. Uh, it's very visible. All right, we go into visual settings, visual set, and we're gonna deal with a few things in here. We are gonna set horizontal scalar to 11. Oh, it's grayed out. You can't set it. That's because auto scalar. It's not off. Go into auto scaler and choose off. And go to horizontal scaler. And it says 6. You want to choose 11 if you want it like me. <laughs> and this is another thing you can't see. But um, sometimes you can see when it's text on black background mostly you can see. Oh, remember to press OK you can see it kind of vibrating and buzzing and like it's dancing a little bit and that's annoying me um, I don't know if this is my imagina imagination but it seems to be reduced if you put that up from 6 and upwards don't go much higher than 11 or the picture will screw up a little bit if you can't see a difference if you can't see anything dancing or anything just leave it at 6 I guess that was horizontal scalar we have the horizontal width. You can see that white line out there on the left, just uh, between the light blue and black. That white line is, uh, is annoying if you are playing a game which has a black background, and it's just big fat uh, vertical white bar. It looks very screwy. So to get rid of that, we need to horizontal width. You go in there, it says 32, you want to put it to 34. And it's gone. All right. Um, go into color settings. I'm pretty sure we've been in there. <laughs> okay. In inside there, there is a sharpness setting. It says zero. Most recommend you leave it at zero, but I need to put it at one. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. Here. Now here I have zoomed in on the letters. 
you can see a difference now. I'm putting it to 1 now. 0 1 You can see the difference, right? 0 1 It's like the the letters are getting a little bit more sharp. So put sharpness at 1 and press OK. That was it for the main settings. Now as a little bonus, I'm going to show you how to set up zoom. That means that if you're playing a game that uh, does not make use of the border, you can, uh, you can zoom in and uh, have the picture get bigger, if you like that. I like a big picture. You open the menus and you go to zoom settings, which is down here somewhere, zoom set, and you enable it. This should be the same for you, but this is working on my pic my my television. Size, zoom size. It says 50. You want to put that at 77. So that's a good deal upwards. Really here, 77. There, and you press OK. Horizontal position should be 47. There, and vertical position should be 42 42 there and press OK and press the menu button to get out of it there now the remote has a dedicated zoom button so to just disable and enable zoom quickly you just press the zoom button that's the lower right button the yellow button you just press it there to disable press it and it's enabled this is very convenient I like that it's it makes games look it makes them pop I really I really love it okay now one last thing what you want to pay attention to is the lower purple scroll texts it should be very smooth. Um, it should be like that at default, so you you need not worry about it too much. But this is something I feel you should know. Go into menu and you go to synchronization settings, which is there, sync set, sync mode. It's auto by default. If you set it to off and keep an eye on the purple scroll text you can see it skips once in a while keep an eye on it there there you can see it does that once in a while that's because the Commodore 64 don't does not have a clean 50 Hertz output it's just like I don't remember it's a little off a little higher, a little lower than a 50, and that makes the picture skip once in a while. It needs to lock the hertz from the Commodore 64 with the hertz on the... Yeah, I don't know. If you're very technical minded, you might laugh at me right now. But you want to lock them so it displays exactly what the Commodore 64 is outputting. And that's called vertical lock. So you can view it in status, you can view it in full status or just status. I'm just going to tell, show you the status. You can see the bottom line, it says the resolution and the P for progressive and it says unlock. And unlock means it's not locked <laughs> and uh, we want it locked. And that is done in here, you guessed it. Sync mode, auto. Now, auto usually means on. You can't force it on. If your video source is a little bit off, then it should automatically lock it. Go into status and check status. And now you can see it. It says lock at the bottom, and you want that. That is very good. So I hope you could use this video for something. Well, if you like it, Please uh, give me a thumbs up, and if you have any questions or something, just leave a message, and I'll see to it. For more, vid more videos like this, please subscribe. Actually, 
it's not going to be many hardware videos. It's mostly gaming videos. So now you know that. Alright, thank you for your time. Thank you.